back to Eastland, oh, no, no, no. oh, but my heart is in Havana, my heart is in Havana, Havana, no, no, no. So welcome back everyone to part one of a, of a short video series where we're going to be uh, doing a little, uh, a little blacksmithing. Uh, I'm, I'm somewhat reluctant to do black, blacksmithing videos uh, because uh, I am uh, not, not uh, super talented at this and I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of self-taught and a beginner. Um, I don't want to uh, come off as uh, uh, some sort of an expert in the field because I am certainly not. And a lot of the things that I'll, I do may not be the best techniques and such, but it's uh, uh, I do what I can, and uh, I enjoy doing it, um, and I'm learning all the time. So uh, let me bring you up here close and kind of show you uh, what I'm thinking, and then we'll get started. So I've mocked up the rough shape, the shape of the uprights here with this uh, wire, uh, so that I have kind of a template to work on. Um, so I've bent these two together here uh, that are going to give it roughly its shape. It's going to be a four candle holder. Um, that'll all come to the top with, of course, with the wood base. So here is the, roughly the shape. This is, this, this here is two of the, of the four holders uh, that will come up. You can see that, that the, I've matched these up here. So they're pretty much the same. And they're going to be, um, the second leg will be offset and a little bit lower and then riveted together with a twist in it kind of something like this here. The scale of the upright arms is pretty important and I've kind of been going back and forth on this. Um, I was looking at some of this flat bar here, which was, that to me was just maybe a little bit too, too light, too, uh, too delicate, um, and maybe wider than I wanted. And I, and I found this here, it's probably, a, oh, it's probably a three eighths thickness or so by uh, one inch or so. And that I think is gonna be just about the right that have the right look being this will be split into two different arms and then for the for the cones uh, the portion that's going to hold the candle sticks uh, this will be uh, a 16 gauge uh, steel um, that will cut out here and bend those around into kind of a, a cone or a really a tight funnel is my idea regarding tools i don't have a lot of stuff i'm just starting to put things together i got a new hammer um, I think this is a French pattern hammer. I, I haven't used it yet. I'm excited to try that out today. Um, I've got, these are tools that I've built myself. These are um, for punching holes. Um, and then this is a, I think it was called a walking chisel that I used for, to split and to cut steel. Um, kind of some universal tongs here. These two I picked up at garage sales. These I, I purchased from the Whitlocks family. Kind of a universal set. Um, but that's, oh, and then I built this here. This will be uh, used a little die that I built for making uh, rivets. 
and we'll need to make some um, two small rivets to join the uprights together. And I'll show you how I've done this in the past. These fit in here and I can clamp them in the vise and then I could round off of those head, round those heads off. Like that works pretty good for making, uh, making rivets. So this is my forge. This is something you may, it may not have seen anything like this before. This is, uh, these are actually built by the Whitlocks family in Oregon. Um, I met them some years ago and I got one from them. Forge. Uh, you're probably familiar with propane or coal. You know, those are, those have traditionally been the best way. But out west, um, years ago, a lot of smiths would um, forge with wood because that's what was readily available. And I'm kind of partial to it. It's, it's not as hot as the other ones and it takes a little bit more uh, care caretaking to keep it going. But um, after about an hour or so uh, of tending the fire and using the blower, you build up a nice base of coals like this and it seems to work really good. The wood that I use are just little scraps of red and white fur uh, that I kind of keep ends or different things for, that are kind of too small for firewood uh, that I dry through the summertime and then keep them in the shop and then I just break them up into these little pieces here and I put them in this big bucket here. It's probably about a seven or eight gallon bucket. It's about enough to forge pretty much anything that I need to do. It'll, it'll be good for half a day or so. And I keep that handy nearby and just keep feeding it and keep that coal bed up. And this is a hand crank blower. What this allows me to do is, as I come up, is I can introduce forced air from underneath the forge, and that uh, produces a, a lot of heat and builds a nice coal base. So here's the first template, uh, the piece that will want to duplicate this with the heavy steel. So I need to determine what length to cut it at. So I can use a piece of rope here and follow the entire length of the template here, pinch that off. And this gives me the length, the overall length of the piece of steel and how long I need to, I need to cut it right here. So the first thing we need to do before we do any bending is to split this steel. We need to split it all the way down to this point right here. And got a really nice coal bed there. 